for this episode, we will finally get to talk about the representation of Samantha Bernardo as Miss Grand International Philippines 2021. So please make sure you stick around, please subscribe to the channel, as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly fashion fix. Hey guys, welcome back. I am currently hustling. I am battling the elements because I am filming this in the afternoon and if you guys have been following me here at the Tito Lavinia channel then you already have an idea that I seldom do this. I usually film my contents very very late at night or very early in the morning where everyone is asleep but that's not gonna happen right now. You will definitely hear the tricycles, the dogs, and the kids because everybody is up and about. However, I am making an exception this time because we have an announcement. It's pretty major and yeah, I feel like we have to talk about this because I did tell you in my previous video, which was just yesterday, that, you know, whatever scoop I get, um, whatever confirmation I get from the powers that be, I'm going to be cascading to you guys. So, yeah, I'm doing this for you after being MIA for about 10 days. So you get two episodes in one week. So, yeah, let's uh, go get into it. So, first of all, Huge, huge congratulations to Samantha May Bernardo, who just earned the right at representing the Philippines at this coming Miss Grand International, which will take place this uh, March in Thailand. So for those of you who don't know, um, this is exactly what I have been hinting for the past couple of episodes that I made. So at least now we have that um, announcement. It's pretty official. They already posted this on the Miss Grand International Facebook account, Bini Bini Pilipinas also reposted the announcement, but we have to wait because I think Bini Bini Pilipinas is getting ready to make a more formal announcement. So as we are talking um, about this right now, Samantha's team is working overtime to put together her wardrobe. Um, they're working overtime to film uh, contents as well as shoot um, not just the videos as well as the photos that will be needed for um, promotion because they only have a couple of days or at least a little over two weeks to make everything uh, in order. So this um, announcement is somewhat bittersweet because we all know that weeks prior, um, the current Miss Grand title holder, which is Miss Grand Philippines 2019, um, Aya Abisamis, has been very vocal and has been very active in her campaign. But the thing is that when Samantha Lowe vacated the title um, after resigning, um, after that really bizarre 2019 stint at Miss Grand International, the title transferred to Aya. But at this time, Aya was supposed to just fill in the part but not really have um, a concrete plan to, com um, to compete. And so the pandemic happened and all of the plans got halted. So Aya kept on, um, you know, Aya kept the title without really a uh, confirmation whether she was going to be sent internationally or that um, if she was just going to keep the title up until a new set of winners come in. So as we all know, um, if we can go back to last year, everything stopped. Binibini Pilipinas halted their activities. Even Miss Grand International did not push through with their final. So most of the movement happened in January of this year, making it, you know, a little bit safer, a little bit easier to move around. So Binibini Pilipinas resumed their um, activities and Miss Grant International also announced that they will be pushing through with the finals this coming March. So um, the thing here is that everybody had coordination. So if you're going to think that Aya was slighted, um, I feel you. Because, you know, Aya and her team really did put in the work to make sure that she gets the buzz, to make sure that, you know, she gets to produce all these beautiful images. It's just that um, even when they were doing this, Aya and her team knew exactly what the hurdles were. They knew that age was not on their side because Aya is already already 29 and whatever arrangements it is between Aya and maybe the Miss Grand International organization, this has something to do with just the negotiation of allowing Aya to compete even at her age. So there is no question that the Miss um, Grand International organization would have really wanted Aya. It's just that they could not extend 
the age limit just for her. So this was something that the team knew. Um, this was something that, uh, you know, they accepted. So the whole announcement and the whole um, arrangement with picking out someone or sending someone to Miss Grand International was not even pursued by Binibining Pilipinas seriously. I think what happened was that they weren't even thinking about this at all. It's just that with the mounting pressure and maybe, you know, the sadness of the Filipino fans that we wouldn't have any representation at this coming Miss Grand International, they budged a little bit. So if you think that they just plucked Samantha out of the roster because Samantha is still... Um, an official candidate before all of these hopla, uh, it just meant that they gave it careful consideration and that they um, definitely um, made moves to make sure that they went into the right decision. So you guys don't worry um, because Samantha was not appointed for the sake of appointing Samantha. In fairness to Binibini Pilipinas, they did consider the two ladies. They did try to work on who they could send. Um, they tried to really they tried to really fight for Aya. It's just that the organization was really firm with their decision. They couldn't extend the age limit further to 29. Now you may say, Tita, the age limit for Miss Grand International is 27. They pulled definitely some strings because um, Samantha is 28. Now the thing is that, yes, um, it is true the age limit for Miss Grand International is indeed 27, but unlike Miss International, Miss Grand International made an announcement that those who will be turning 28 after October, which was the original date of the 2020 edition, will be allowed to compete in uh, 2021. So that basically means that all of the ladies who have turned 28 because of the postponement will be allowed this time. So this is the difference between Miss Grand International and Miss International because Miss International initially had the same idea um, of allowing the 28-year-olds to compete, but they retracted their statement. I cannot give you like the details as to why exactly they picked Samantha Bernardo, but if you are a pageant fan in the Philippines, you would pretty much understand that you know she's next in line, she's very reliable, you don't really have to train her as much. You just have to give her a little bit of time to put together everything. So that's why she was given the opportunity. And I think that this is an amazing opportunity because Miss Bernardo should have really won a crown as early as 2018. Now, let me give you also a little bit of a background on Samantha. Samantha is 28 years old. She is no stranger to the world of pageantry. She competed in Miss World in 2013 and then gave it a, you know, a long, um, uh, you know, gave it a long period of reinvention and maybe, um, you know, rest. She went back to pageantry in 2018 and um, this was the time that she went really viral because if you remember she was so striking she was so fresh during the 2018 screening she was in that blue bikini and people were like saying ah oh, she has the fit she has the form and the body of you know a latina because of all the curves and the way she stood up she has um you know she was really poised so everybody started talking about her and then we start, started learning that she was is a former pageant girl um, that she took her time and then she went back and you know if, if I may she really gave a stellar performance in 2018 maybe people didn't think that she was um, ready enough because in 2018 she was really up against uh, some of the best speakers in um, you know Philippine pageant history with the likes of Catriona Gray we also with the likes of Michelle Gumabo so as early as 2018, she could have really gotten that representation at MGI, even at Supra. She could even go further and represent us um, at Miss International because Samantha Bernardo has a very interesting background that could really fit these pageants. 
first of all, Samantha is an athlete. She has been um, a rhythmic gymnast for nine years, so she represented the Philippines. And then right after that, she continued her stint as a cultural dancer. So she has been a strong advocate of culture and the arts here in the Philippines, which could work really, really well at Miss International too. So as a dancer, as a model, she has all the moves to do really well in, let's say, Supranational, even in Miss Grand International. So yeah, as early as 2018, people were already considering her for that crown. So I just don't know what happened. Um, I guess it has something to do with what I mentioned in my previous video, the one with um, what these pageants are looking for. Maybe during deliberation, um, they were really heavy on the fact that Miss Grand International had a speech segment and maybe thought that, you know, Samantha could use another year. So she ended up with a second runner-up position in 2018 and then went back to 2019 a little more aggressive. Now, if I may go back to 2019, um, she was... Yeah, admittedly more aggressive. Um, I, I suppose this did not help her campaign because, again, she ended up with a second runner-up finish, something that was a little uh, heartbreaking, of course, for a competitive Samantha Bernardo. But anyway, even with um, you know some tweaks that had to be done during the finals in terms of her styling, because, I mean, let's admit it, because she was just so forceful with her second try, um, everything was just too much during the finals. I think it did not help her in 2019. But nevertheless, if they really wanted a really good representation as early as 2019, they could have given her that crown. But alas, it was not her time. And as with, you know, pageantry in general, one day you're in, the next day you're out. This is exactly what happened this time. Um, Samantha was just supposed to compete normally at Binibining Filipinas um, with finals uh, set this coming April. But because of the circumstances, because of the twist of fate, because of um, serendipity, you may say, yeah, she is now our representative for Miss Grand International. So something that she did, this I seem is something that she prepared for, you know, that she has been preparing for for years, but this is also something that she probably did not realize would happen this year. So whatever it is, whatever intervention that is from the pageant gods, we thank you. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity for Samantha. Um, of course, we feel bad for Aya because she is actually perfect for the part. But rest assured that these girls, they talk to each other. Um, uh, if I am not in the habit of lifting uh, conversations, private conversations, but I'm going to flash this one for you because what happened was that they kept this one secret. Um, it started leaking out in public minimally. Um, I think there were an, um, there were oversights in terms of posting from um, aesthetic partners and maybe other pages out there who's just super excited in blurting out um, the news from their reliable sources even before the announcement. So I think people already have an idea or had an idea that Samantha was going to be um, seriously considered for the Miss Grand International representation. But it wasn't until today, February 5, that everyone um, you know, had uh, confirmation, at least, that it's no longer speculation that Samantha will definitely be flying to Thailand this coming March. So the thing here is that... Um, it would have been best um, had they waited uh, because this is, you know, really happy news for the Filipino pageant fans. But um, just so you know, I understand your frustrations and maybe your sadness over some of the girls. But I will be flashing um, this little bit of conversation I had with Samantha last night. Um, Samantha had been praying to have the announcements out so that she can move around because while this was happening, of course, everything was kept on the down low. Everything was still secret. She couldn't really move around. Um, I think she would have really wanted to share the good news, but she wanted um, to also wait for the proper timing. And today was the right time to do that. So um, she shared a little bit of a snip 
snippet with me, um, she did say that she will definitely fight for the Miss Grand International crown. She will definitely keep Vicky as well as Aya in mind. So she has two of the most amazing Bini Binis as her motivation for her fight this coming March. So what is in store for Samantha? What can we expect from Samantha? Well, definitely Samantha is polished. She is something, um, or she is someone who can definitely do whatever it takes to become uh, that amazing Miss Grand International representative because she has had years of speculation. She has had years of what ifs. So she understands what is needed of her. She understands the branding. Um, I think we have been very vocal as well in letting her know that uh, Miss Grand International is very specific. I have my cat here. She wants to get involved. I'm just going to allow her to get involved anyway because, yeah, I'm trying to finish this one for you. But um, she understands the brand. She understands what is needed of her. She understands the intricacies of being a Miss Grand International representative. So if you say that, oh, Tita, she's just going to be um, elbowed by Nawat and she's just going to be treated badly, don't worry about this because we have our girl. She has a very strong personality. I don't think that this is someone that you can... Um, elbow i don't think that this is someone that you can just shove into a corner samantha bernardo will do everything that it takes to shine in that shining pageant so this uh, concludes my you know short episode for you guys i hope that um you continue to um support samantha and yes yeah, support her through this channel because we will definitely be covering Miss Grand International now that we have someone really strong. So we are coming from two consecutive years of non-placement. So now we have Samantha. She is here. She has the blessing of Binibining Pilipinas. She also seems to have the blessing of two of our, you know, heartbreaks this year. Vicky Rushton and um, Aya Abisamis. And of course, she has the support of the Filipino pageant fans who have been so thirsty for our representation for something really pageanty this year so thank you so much guys i will definitely update you and hola bye